Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Um, now, <laughs> I know, well, I'm going to get Shana back, but she's um, a little bit, screaming. hello, there we go. Let's see, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I have no that idea was, what happened there. Wow. But, okay. But hey, you're, you're here. That's the main thing. I'm back. You're I'm back. back. Yay. I'm trying to get so, it to flip. There it goes. Hey. There we go. You working okay there? I am. Excellent. So, um, everybody, welcome to this edition of the Angels of Destiny show. Why is this show called this? You may ask, so I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger, and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Shana Forrestal. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show, but show live for a later date. As it means a lot to me to connect my, my like-minded women. If you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to cross those in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform the present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life regression, past life regression, angelic reiki, angel cards, hypnosis, to help women who feel get lost, get clear on their destiny and their reason for being here. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation of angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Shana Forrestal, who will be explaining about We Can Hear You and how it could help you reconnect with yourself. Now, Shana has been involved in storytelling since she was a little girl, playing dress up with her siblings and friends. She's always been captivated by unique real life stories and lured by the power of tables and myths to teach life's truths. Shana has been involved in advertising, marketing and public relations since the 1990s, helping nonprofits and small businesses to define their brand and spread their passion through personalized messaging. Shana has also produced six short films in the US that tackle social issues and several video projects in India to support a school for disabled children and to raise awareness on the plight of eunuchs in Indian society. Shana is also now a consultant producer on Restoring Balance, Autism Recovery, a groundbreaking documentary by brain trauma specialist Ryan Hetrick. She is passionate about equality and inclusion. Shana mentors and hires young people on the spectrum weekly in her business. She also works with nonprofits and local initiatives that support abuse, women, animal advocacy, and any human in need. Shana loves diversity and often partners with companies and nonprofits to help them reach specific project goals. With all this wisdom Shana created, we can hear you, as she realized the need to allow women and men the chance to express themselves without having to use their voice. So without further delay, hello Shana and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hi, I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's brilliant. Thank you, thank you for coming along. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Shana and I want to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments live or once the show is finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can get updates on all recordings. So Shana, why don't you tell us more about yourself and what is We Can Hear You? Okay, so um, it's so funny hearing your bio read, you know, because it's so funny. Like a few weeks ago, I was talking to my friend. I was like, but I just don't feel like my life is really important. She's like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> and it's so funny how, you know, we look at our, our contributions and sometimes we just kind of downplay our own work. And then you hear it and you're like, mm. wait, I, I, I've done something. I've done something. You've done, you've done quite a lot. You've done quite. <laughs> it just, I don't know. It's so weird. But anyway, um, I think, you know, what I've realized in the last a little while, um, you know, two years ago, I had a, I had a pretty bad car wreck and I was in chronic severe pain and there's nothing like, you know, suffering and trauma to kind of give you a, a new look at life and to kind of bring you really into the present, um, and to make you really aware of where you are. And, um, and I, so I've kind of had this epiphany in the last year or two, kind of about who I am and what my purpose is. And it's been lovely because as, as traumatic as it's been, um, 
I was telling my mom this morning, it's like, I'm so grateful for the experience because it's, it's formed me into a new Shannon. It's really helped me to settle into who I am and what my, what my job is here on earth. And, and when I look back now at my life, it makes so much more sense to me. What felt random before is really not random. There has been a very specific order to my life and my experiences and even my work. And now it all kind of makes sense to me. I'm like, oh, that's what I do. I figured it out at 47, finally. But, you know, I've been doing it. I've been doing it. But finally, I kind of understand it. And I think that's going to bring my work to a new level because I've realized at the end of the day what I am is an advocate. And I have finally, through lots of work on myself, learned to be an advocate for me. And I believe it's making me a better advocate for all of the other people groups that I help fight for. And, um, and you know, autistic kids or, you know, pe- women who have suffered sexual assault as I have, uh, women who have been in abusive relationships as I have. I've lived through a lot. And I think the gift of that is, is understanding suffering, understanding pain and understanding now on my journey, like how we can overcome and utilize those things to be a better human and to really hopefully go out and help other humans as well. So we can hear you as just an extension of all of that. You know, I've been making movies, I've been telling stories, I've been doing all these things for a long time, but um, we can hear you as a whole nother level of that. And when I created it, literally, it was the survival mechanism. I was in such a deep depression from the chronic pain. I was in pain all of the time. My mind, my body was off and I just was, you know, sick and struggling and didn't, couldn't put a finger on the diagnosis and there was no solution and didn't know how long it was going to last. And it was a very black space to be in. Um, when I thought, you know, and what's crazy is I had just gotten married. I was like the happiest point I'd ever been in my whole life um, of just I'd been working on healing, personal healing and, you know, all of these things. I found the man of my dreams and we got married and like literally within, you know, two months after we got married, I got in this accident and everything changed. And I hear it. And then all of a sudden I'm in this black space and I'm like, wait, I'm supposed to be happy right now. I'm peaceful. It's the first time in my life I like myself, you know, and like and, and yet this dark cloud came out of nowhere and just like covered my life. And so it was a really weird space to be in. Um, feeling this little literal paradox of feelings. And I, I was sitting there one day and I thought, okay, how am I going to stay alive through this? Cause I literally would have days where I'm just like, I don't want to live. The pain was so bad. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't, I felt like I was useless. I felt like I was a weight on my family, on my husband, my new husband and everything. I was like, I, I just, I'm not the person he married. I'm I'm tired. I'm in pain. I can't think straight. I'm, my life is just doesn't have purpose right now. I can't contribute. I can't do anything, you know? And I thought, how am I going to get through this? And I thought, well, what is wrong, Shanna? Like what's really wrong? And I thought, well, I can't even, when people would ask me, how are you doing? I didn't even have words to tell them. I was in such a space of like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm here but I don't know how I'm doing, you know? And so it kind of came from that because I thought, okay, if I feel this way, there's a really good chance there are other humans who have felt this way or who are feeling this way. And I thought, how about Shanna, we get this attention off of you. Yes, it's dramatic and yes, it's horrible, but maybe you can distract yourself by thinking about other people instead of focusing on your own personal stuff right now. And then also, what could you do to help yourself and other people? So I thought, well, maybe if I had a way to express this, because I just, I feel angry, I feel sad, I feel pain, I feel frustration, I don't feel hope right now, I don't know when this is going to end, I, you know, all these things, it was just like, bah. and so I was like, okay, so what could I do to give myself a way to communicate that? And I thought about paint. Because paint is something very, there's something very primal about putting our hands into paint. You know, and I used to do, in my 20s, I did humanitarian aid work and um, I did art, kind of art therapy. I had no training for this, but I was doing art therapy in other countries with kids and I had found paint as a way to communicate, to communicate with those children. Because a lot of times I was working with a translator because I didn't speak the languages and also to give them a way to communicate visually because there's something uh, really powerful about communicating visually and not having to put things into words. So I thought, well, what if I just go back to that primal instinct of putting our hands uh, in paint and touching and feeling and, and looking at color? I'm always very affected by color and things like that. 
And I thought, you know, maybe I just, maybe I'm just going to paint myself, like just paint how I feel because I don't have the words for this. And, and usually I do, I'm a pretty decent writer and, you know, I, I usually am a pretty good communicator once I wrap my head around something. And I was like, I just, this time there were no words. And so I was like, okay, I'll let paint be my medium. So I, then I thought, well, I can't just do this by myself. Um, cause I'm always one of those, like, let's get everybody to do it. And I was like, so there's gotta be other people that are hurting. There's gotta be other people that are going through stuff, you know? So I basically just turned it into this thing and I was like, all right, I'm going to be, I got a space. I got a beautiful space. It was an attic in this historic building here that has this beautiful energy. And, um, you know, we're going to go in the attic. We're going to get a huge mirror. It's a huge mirror. And we're just going to look at ourselves and paint. So I put a call out just like any other random people going through some really difficult stuff. <laughs> want to come paint yourself and be crazy, <laughs> you know, and people showed up. I mean, it was amazing. I got emails from people, random people that I didn't know, or some I knew a little bit and they were just like, Hey, I, I want to do this, you know? And I thought, okay, I I'm on to something. <laughs> So we set it up and I thought, this is going to be beautiful. And being the filmmaker that I am, I'm like, this is going to be beautiful. All these humans connecting with themselves and this visual. And I was like, I'm going to ask them if they're okay with it. I, you know, I'm going to set up cameras and shoot this because I think it'd be lovely. And so we did, we set up cameras and we set up this beautiful space and, um, people showed up and I said, this is what I'm, you know, I'm thinking, whatever you're feeling, show me. Show yourself, really look at yourself in the mirror and connect with yourself and then express that. This is your space. This is your space to drop all the labels. You don't have to be a mom in this room. You don't have to be a wife. You don't have to be, uh, you know, the postman. You don't have to be any of the identities that you wear in this space. You take them off and you walk in and you just be you. And you sit in this mirror and look into yourself look into yourself. And there was something really beautiful that happened that day. And I was the lucky person who got to sit in the back. I would just kind of turn the cameras on, sit in the back and hide and watch these beautiful, courageous expressions of humans getting honest with themselves. And it was magical. You know, if I even look at the photos, I start to cry or even think about their images because it was just such a gorgeous experience. You know, it takes bravery for us to be honest with ourselves about who we are and where we are and what we're really feeling and thinking, because sometimes it's not pretty. <laughs> it's not pretty, but there's a power in that of being really honest with ourselves, not just about the good things about ourselves, but the shadow self too. Because some days I just want to be a bitch. I want to be selfish. I want to speak rudely to people. I want to tear shit up, you know? And it's like, I have to look at that side of myself and say, Shannon, what's going on? What is this? You know, what is this anger that you're repressing? What is this jealousy that's flaring up in you? What is this insecurity? Wow, that's ugly. That thought you just had about that person that walked by, boy, that was ugly. What is this? But it's, it's been my journey to learn to look at all sides of myself mm -hmm. and to accept and to love and to give space. And I think that has been the biggest proponent of growth in my life because all of those years that I spent pretending through, you know, religion kind of encouraged me to pretend that I didn't feel that anymore. And I didn't think that anymore because it wasn't allowed, right? I had to be this good person. Well, there's a problem with that because when we repress and we're not honest about who we are in the core of us and the thoughts that we're actually having, something goes very wrong and we become cracked and we become a divided self. And for me to come back to the one Shanna and to be able to be true with that Shanna and to be able to stand there and look in the mirror at myself and be honest and to really love and accept her has taken courage. And watching other people do that was beautiful and encouraging and motivating and inspiring. And it was just this lovely experience. And, and it was amazing because we had people at different walks of life, different ages, different demographics. Uh, you know, one man was moving cross country by himself. He was really anxious about it. He was a member of the LGBTQ community. We had a, a young woman who was taking a new step in her career and she was really dealing with self doubt. Can I do this? You know, she's taking some risks. There was um, another man who had lost his wife and he had been locked, just 
locked down in grief for three years. His heart had been closed because of pain. And his, you know, his story is just beautiful. Um, you know, so everybody came in with a different story in a different place, but they found a space. And that's what the goal was, to create a sacred space where people could come in, be really honest with themselves, connect with themselves, and express something about what they found. And it was lovely. And it was life-changing. And so that's how it started in an attic. <laughs> in a beautiful old historic house in Pasadena, California, where I was like, I don't want to kill myself today. So why don't y'all come hang out with me? We'll go throw some paint around and find some purpose in life. And you know what? We did. We found some beautiful, beautiful moments that day. That's how it all started. Yeah. Wow. That's it's it's kind of like you you know um, just hearing you talk about it. You know, you can you can feel the energy. Um, you know, you know that that was there that day. And yeah, it, it is something, you know, we do have to work on our dark side. You know, we, we can't always be good. You know, we'd, we'd love to be, but we're humans. And yeah. that, you know, we're, we're designed to have bad and good days. But it's, it's what you do with those bad thoughts, those bad days, that makes the difference with, 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 with how you are. Um, and that, and, yeah, and, and looking in the mirror as well, you know, I've, that's one of the things I find, you know, when I when when I've got clients, etc., is literally look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that you love you. Look in your eyes and say you love you. And it's amazing how many people can't do that straight away without it. It's right. It's, it's, yeah. Well, we don't practice, and you know, it's amazing because we go through life and we don't really look at each other. We sure don't look at ourselves. Yeah. You know, we don't even look really look oftentimes into the eyes of our spouse or our children or our pets. I found when I'm training a pet, the most effective thing I can do is get down with them and look right into their face and communicate. And then you can see into them, you can see their fear, you can see their, their, you know, whatever is going on in there, you can see it and you can communicate to them the safety that you offer if that's what you're bringing. It's the same with humans. We have to stop. We have to really look deep and really look and listen and connect and we're just not doing that as a human race. You know, this, this is disconnecting us. You know, it's always been something through mankind, I'm sure, right? It's not yes. new that we're disconnected. But there's always something. But this technology, as beautiful it is, I mean, it's making this happen. We're having a worldwide yes. conversation right now, right? Because of technology, it's got so many wonderful assets. It's bringing things to our life. But at the same time, we have to be really careful that it's not disconnecting us even more from ourselves and our families and our world. When's the last time you touched a tree and like really hugged it? I go to the park and just hug trees. I am a true tree. Yeah, so, so I mean, <laughs> right? Like I, I live right by Huntington Gardens and I go over there and I just literally hug trees and just like, oh, I love you. I talk to my trees in the yard, you know, because I just, I know how important it is for me to stay connected to nature. Yeah. The best Shanna, the best Shanna comes out and lives when I am as grounded as possible. And I'm learning what that means. For me, that means pet energy. It means tree and ant, plant and animal energy. It means all these things that help me stay grounded, help me stay true to the core of who I am. If I feel myself getting off center, um, feeling negative emotions, all these things I've, I'm learning, stop and center and ground. And, and I know what does that for me. But we're not doing that for ourselves. And so we have all of us running around harass, you know, harassing other people because we're angry and we're, we're anxious and we're stressed and we're not connected to ourselves or the world. And so it's a problem. And I think that's why we're seeing such a rise in bullying and all of these things. You know, I work a lot with autistic kids. I work a lot with the LGBTQ community. Um, and that's who we can hear you, part of who we can hear you is targeting. And it's just the level of cruelty that we can that we can operate in sometimes as humans is just shocking to me that we can really be cruel to other people simply because of the way they look or the way they talk or their lack of understanding or you know their lifestyle i mean how dare we how dare we but we dare it because we're doing it to ourselves first yeah. right because we're not truly loving ourselves i think when we come into a true love of ourselves it is impossible to be that way to other people when you learn empathy and self-love and self-advocacy and all of these things then you can't help 
but extend that out to the world because you understand the power of it and you understand just how important it is to humanity. That's what's changed me from being so judgmental. I used to be judgmental. Oh, oh, I will tell you, I will admit it all day long. I was a judgmental bitch and I didn't mean to be. I thought I was a Christian being full of love and I was being judgmental all day long and passive aggressive because I, you know, I wasn't being directly aggressive because, well, that was frowned on, but passive aggressive all day long. So I had to work on those things. I constantly have to monitor and check myself. And if I feel that behavior coming, I'm like, hey, what was that? Because that's ugly. And, and I don't like it. You know, we, in the South, we have a saying, God don't like ugly. Well, God don't like it, but I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, neither does anybody else. Nobody likes ugly. You know what I mean? So I'm always checking myself. I'm like, okay, what was that? You know? Yeah. No. But the more connected we are to ourselves and the more connected we are to the earth and to other people and to all of the things that that the God energy brings to us, love, health, joy, awe, all of those wonderful things that we're given on a daily basis. Wow. Then we can be better humans, you know? Yeah. Well, I got, uh, my girl uh, has said true. She, she agreed with what we are saying. And she also says um, that she works with clear in touch with negative energy, but she had to do it for herself first. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's, she's so right. I mean, like, we, how dare we go out and try to fix other people yeah, <laughs> and like try to tell other ourselves. people what to do when we're not practicing. And I see that a lot, you know, and, and especially in organized religion, I have a problem with a lot of organized religion. I know that people like structure and that's fine. And anybody can, I'm open to whatever anybody wants to believe or practice. But at the same time, if it's taking us away from ourselves, if anything is taking us outside of ourselves and not causing us to have accountability you know, it's real easy to point at a devil or point at something else instead of saying, you know what, I am selfish and mm. I behaved selfishly today. And that selfishness hurt someone else. And to ask yourself, where did that come from? What can I do about it? And how can I prevent that next time? And yeah. who do I need to apologize to? Who do I need to humble myself in front of and say, I am so sorry I did this to you and I hurt you. You know, sorry does go a long way. Because we're not going to be perfect. We're going to have days where we hurt each other. We're going to snap at somebody. We're going to do something. And, ah, you know, exactly. intentionally, right. unintentionally, whatever. Like, it's just what happens. Yeah, but, it's, yeah. It's, it's, just part, it's just part of the human experience, you know. And a lot of the stuff that, that we do bring into life is stuff that we've, we've picked up from our peers and our parents when we were children. Yes. Because if, if, you, if yes. you put young children who've not had sort of like any um, – influences together they don't see any differences between other children they just see another child they, they just see yes. the energy of that that it's another child with them it's right. just only when we start putting our ideas and society puts their ideas that they start forming all these the these um, thoughts these ideas these patterns misconceptions about other people yeah and you know what we um what was i going to say uh we just we do we like you're saying we don't learn these things till later and our natural self i think understands love and then we get away from it and when we live this life sometimes we're not modeled what appropriate relationships look like i, I literally did not know i believe in my life what healthy relationships look like until i was 36 leaving an abusive marriage and thought I thought I knew something I don't. I'm going to research and find out what this is. And then when I started to study, I went, oh, that's what a healthy marriage looks like. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen one. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what healthy communication is. That's what a boundary is. Wow. No wonder I'm trying to control the world. I've never had any boundaries. <laughs> right. And I don't understand why we go through all these years of education and we're taught all these things that are important, you know, chemistry, math, and whatever, right? How to write, spell. But we're not taught how to communicate. No. And we're not taught how to listen. And we're not taught how to love or have empathy or how to advocate for ourselves or others. Like, those are things that we are not taught oftentimes. No. Unless you come up in a healthy, sane educated family, those things are not part of the norm. And so unfortunately, most of us are severely undereducated for life. 
But yeah. I think, and what the reason I'm, you know, I'm turning, we can hear you into something bigger is because the things that I've learned in this process, and I, I, I love studying people. I study myself. I study people. I study personality types and communication styles and love languages. And like, I love all of that, you know, because I think it's all those things that make us unique. It's all those things that give us the humanity that we love, right? And it also causes the challenges because we don't think the same, we don't communicate the same, we respond differently to stimuli, all of that's different. But it also makes, makes the beauty of everything is that imperfection. But the more we can learn to understand those things and process them, um, the more we can grow to be adults, kind adults, loving adults, and, and mature people, we can hear you as a starting point. It's a place where people can actually learn to sit because we create a safe space. There's no, ju no judgment zone, right? Anybody can come in. You sit and you start your practice of self-connection. And that leads to self-love. And then it leads to self-advocacy because when we understand, then we advocate. We become advocates for. Because then we're like, oh, that person or this person has been through some serious trauma. Maybe I should be kind to her when she has a day where she doesn't really love herself, right? Mm -hmm. And then if I can learn on those days when Shanna doesn't feel lovable to be the adult side of me to step in and say, oh, little Shanna, I understand why you don't feel lovable today because of that thing that happened when you were five years old. But guess what? That's not true. You are so very loved. And if we can do that for ourselves and we learn how important it is, then hopefully we can extend that to other people and bring that love with us wherever we go to anything and everything that needs it. Because what do we need right now? We need more love in we the world. Need much, much more love right? in the world. Yes. For our environment, for our animals, for our people, for everything needs more love. That's something we just can't have enough of. But it starts here. I really believe it starts here. This run around and love everybody doesn't work until we have no. come to love ourselves. Exactly. Even the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, we don't love ourselves. If no. we loved ourselves, we'd be taking care of us. We'd be setting boundaries. We'd yeah. probably be eating better and resting and, and taking care of ourselves mentally, physically, in all these ways. Then we'd be also better at loving other people and loving our community, and forgiving. We'd have more space to forgive. We'd have more grace to hold back on anger. You know, I find that when I am in my, my element, when I am stable and, and grounded, I am immediately more patient. I don't yell as much in the car. I live in LA, and I have to drive in LA <laughs> traffic sometimes, and everybody's screaming, right? Ah, they're all banging yeah. in their cars, and I just practice. I just like... Oh, I just try to turn on some peaceful music and I practice patience. I, let, I try to let everybody in because I was that person who was so angry all the time, driving around like, bah, 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 you, bah, bah. Christmas season is the worst. Everybody's stressed, doing too much. A lot of people deal with grief in the holiday season as well. A lot of people deal with, you know, very serious emotions. Suicide goes up during the holiday season. Yeah. Right now, today is the day that we should be operating in as much love as possible, you know, from now to the end of the year. I just want to be love. I want to be love. But it starts here. It starts yeah. in my home. It starts in my heart. It starts in my marriage, right? And then I should take it out to the world. Then it's genuine and it's real. That's what I'm hoping for, you know, is yeah. that we can hear you as a spark where people can sit and look at themselves and connect to themselves and then, okay, you know, now that I've learned it with me, I'm going to try to go practice it out there. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. I just think it's unfair when people have to live in their body or in their space of who they are as a human and not feel like they're okay. Yeah. And you yeah. know what? If that means I don't have to understand everything or agree with everything, that's okay. Because I think that other human should be able to be loved, to feel lovable, to be able to love themselves and accept the space that they're in. And if that means that right now they're an addict and that's where they are, they still deserve love. Yeah. And if right now 
they're a member of the LGBTQ community and that's their choice and that's their life and that's their body. They deserve to be loved. I have a, a new, newer friend. Uh, I knew her as Rory and now she is Sophie Marie Wright. She's transgender. We spent some time together in New Orleans last weekend and listening to her story of courage of really coming into finding herself. I was so blown away by her kindness. But I guarantee you that she learned that kindness that she puts out, that you just feel. You get around her and you feel how kind and loving she is. And I thought, wow, you learned that loving yourself. When she finally accepted that, you know what? I'm supposed to be Sophie Marie. And she stepped into that and risked everything to be who she believed she's supposed to be. She learned love. And now she is literally the epitome of love. Like you cannot be around her and not feel it. And it inspired me so much. And I thought, wow, wow, we need more of people walking yeah. in their authenticity, whatever that is, just yeah. walking in love. Uh, we, 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 we absolutely do. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had some, um, uh, Ibrahim, who said hello and came on, said, love can heal everything. Yes. I agree. Which, which is absolutely um, brilliant. And Ago says, to know what love is the key to inner balance, which yes. is, um, you know, we, 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 which is true. And John says, hello, John Stewart. Hi, John. <laughs> and, uh, so with the, um, I mean, obviously, when um, you do the painting, I'm guessing you're using non-toxic paint. Yes. If, you, so if, you're, get, if you're painting right. it yourself. We get the non-toxic washable paints and everything. It's really fun. And like, I can show you guys some pictures maybe, but, and we can post some, but mm. um, it's beautiful. So people get non -toxic. I mean, what we're doing is the live events. My goal, honestly, is to start an online campaign where I can get people all over the world to participate wherever they are, individually or in groups. Because here's the beautiful thing about We Can Hear You is like, I think a lot of us, and one, one people group I want to target is LGBTQ youth because the numbers are going up on suicide and depression because of the, in the US, this weird climate where people yeah, are not allowed to be who they yeah. are or to, you know, to, to love how they love. And there's this weird climate right now. And so some of those numbers are even going higher, which when they should be going down. And so what I want it to do is provide a space, either literal physical space. We are going to have live events. We just had two last week and they were incredible. One in LA and one in new Orleans. Um, but then I want to create an online space. I want to find somebody to help me create a digital content platform where people all over the world can participate and share their beautiful expression. And so that we can connect to one another and utilize technology in a good way. You know, I feel like sometimes I get frustrated with technology because I'm like, it's separating us. I'm sitting at coffee with someone and they're on their phone. I'm like, get off yeah, your phone. Exactly, Look at exactly. me. I'm here. Look at me. Right. And I want their attention. I'm like, Ugh. but I do it too. You know, we get distracted. But at the same time, technology is providing this amazing way for us to connect to each other. Like right now, we're having conversations exactly. across yeah. the world. It's I wonderful. Know. <laughs> you know, we're totally different places, different time zones we've never physically met. And yet here we are, you know, all of us connecting in this conversation. Exactly. It's magical. Sharing so I think, day. yes. And that deep darkness, girl, I, I hear you on that. Oh, that's, oh, yes. Oh, girl. But we can pull each other out and we can connect and we can inspire, encourage, hear each other from distance and without even using words. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. So I want it to be an online campaign. I'm doing um, live events and, you know, I'm going to be doing some writing too, because I have, you know, when I look at my life, it's like, we always do downplay ourselves. But then I look at my life, I'm like, I've been through a lot of crap, like a lot of crap, you know, sexual assault at five um, you know, another experience with that, um, married into an abusive marriage, stayed in a way too long, um, religious abuse, uh, everything you can imagine. I've kind of lived through some of that. Yeah. Um, so I, but I've also survived it and come through it. And then also somehow found a way to still be a sane, pretty nice human being. And I'm like, I've learned some stuff. And if I can help people, you know, also speed up their journey, of healing and acceptance and love, then I would love to do that. So I'm, I'm going to find a way to make this campaign bigger and to, and to, and I just love touching people. I love being right there and loving them and listening to their stories. And like the, we do, whoever's open, we do a post interview with them after their experience. And I get so excited because even though so many people are in such a dark space, 
when they come out of the week in Harry, they're always inspired. And it's funny because most people will be like, that was not what I expected at all. Like they were, they come in expecting one thing. I had a girl who yeah. just went through a really rough breakup and she said, I expected to be painting like dark colors and sadness. And like, she's like, I expected myself to have to grieve and be angry. And she said the opposite came out of me. I realized that I'm stronger than I thought I was and I'm further along in my healing than I ever thought I was. And she's like, I just became a warrior. I was like, Hey, wait, this is who I am. And I was like, my goodness, that's beautiful. We can have church right now. You know, we were like jumping around the room, like, girl, look at you. I mean, what a discovery to discover that she was stronger and more developed than she even thought she was. Yeah. It's, yeah. That, that, that's pretty amazing. And, you know, it'll be brilliant if you, if you, if you can get it around global and that, you know, and if, if you need any help with that, let me know, you know, if it's, yeah. I, I can do um, yeah. And I just, I want to go, like, I, I want to go physically when I can, but then I also want to provide a venue that when I can't get there, people can still participate. So my goal is to find someone at a high level who will get behind this program and make it global because I believe it has the power to do that. And I believe our world needs it. I mean, our world needs connection. And I think this is a great outlet because it does allow the digital connection that young people are comfortable with and can engage with. It, it, it brings in artists and creatives who, who love, you know, that. And even people who are not used to it. It's amazing the people that I've gotten in the room and they're like, oh, I don't know. And then once they do it, they're like, I'm so glad I did that. I'm so glad I did that. Like, I did not know what that was, but it was amazing. And it's the, but there's something very primal and childlike about putting your hands in paint and doing and getting dirty, right? Even that process alone of like, we don't get dirty anymore with dirt as adults. Yeah. We don't, you know, mess ourselves up, right? We don't do those things. And there's something really lovely about that. There's something freeing about that, about getting past this facade of like, oh, I have to be this adult now. Yeah. You know, I was reading something the other day about the shadow and they were talking about how the more civilized a society gets, the more we suppress and repress the shadow side instead of acknowledging it. And that's a very dangerous place to be because it will act out. It will just act out in private and you'll become an addict. You'll get addicted to porn or you'll start doing drugs or you'll cheat on your wife. You will do something to act out that shadow side if you do not deal with it. Yeah. So we need outlets to look at the ugly. We need outlets to express it. I'm lucky. You know, I get to do acting. And I was, I was telling you before the, the thing, I've, I mean, I've been playing a drug addicted mom for a couple of days, you know, having crack fits and, you know, running around screaming at people and stuff. And so I, I, for me, that's one of the big outlets I use to deal with my shadow side. You know, I channel the frustration, anger, you know, some of the things that I have to deal with into that work to tell stories. And so I'm lucky to have that outlet, but we don't all have that outlet. So some of us might need to write or, you know, or dance or work out or whatever, you know, and that's, they say, that's why we need, you know, some people need horror movies. I don't like horror movies. I've lived horror and I don't like it. <laughs> I'm like, I want to stay far away. I, mean, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't like horror movies. I've been, enough, I've been scared enough in my life. I don't need fear. <laughs> you know, but some people, some people, that's their outlet. I've, I've been reading on the psychology of it, why people like it. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. And then comedy, when we see people behaving badly, there's something therapeutic about that. That makes, you know, when we see other people behaving badly, we go, oh, I've done that. And then we can laugh at ourselves or laugh at the human condition and all of those things are important you know that's why i love entertainment i love art uh, because it does do those things for us but we just have to make sure we find it and again we can hear you as just a starting point but it's a beautiful powerful starting point and i just love connecting with people and love helping them to connect with themselves or offering you know that space for them to do that that's where it's safe where when that room everybody's loved just as you are like how beautiful if we can practice it and then go around and create it. Because if we can experience it in, in a space, then we can walk out and go, okay, I want to create that for myself. And then, oh, what if we created it for our group of friends? And, oh, what if we created that safe space for our family to really be themselves and to be able to communicate, be authentic, to feel loved and accepted no matter what? And then yeah. what if we all practice that? then our communities become safe spaces and our countries become safe spaces and our world becomes a safe space. And that's my goal is just basically the whole world loves each other. Yeah, I think, you I know. think, I think, I think, I think I mean, a, right? That's, that's world peace, job. world love. <laughs> We're not asking for much. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's all obtainable. Um, it's all obtainable. we exactly. got to try. The bottom yeah, line is we've got to try. And, and Naga says One that she, at a time. 
that, that she paints to let go. And John, who knows her, says that she paints virtual painting with her hands. Oh, oh that makes amazing. me so happy. Oh, how brilliant is that? And, it's amazing. And, and it's amazing how many more people are getting, you know, a, a lot of the um, people that I know now that are getting involved in painting in, in, any, in any form, you know, whether it's um, yes. a stylized or just scribbling or, or just anything. And I think it's a collective energy that people are starting to realise yes. that there are um, other outlets for it. I mean, I was watching... Um, Oh, uh, the watching! I was quite addicted. To, um, addicted. I went and saw it. Prob didn't see as many as others, but I probably went and saw it about <laughs> fourteen, fifteen times. And and that was a um, Bad Pell the musical, um, which is based on the Jim Steinman songs. Right. And um, in it, it's sort of um, Raven. Uh, she kind of like she's kind of like says to um, to to Shadow here and Heron, you know, that she self harm. But what they did um, in the uh, shot where sort of like something some has happened, they've actually show her writing and drawing on her arm. So ah. kind of like rather than self-harming, they've got her drawing um, on, on her arm. Whether, whether they've realised that when they did it, I don't know. But, wow, yeah. But, but that's sort of like um, that, that that's come across. So, yeah, lots more people are... Um, are, uh, are doing stuff um, and now that says telepathic communication heart communication yes yeah exactly because when you are sort of like when you do love yourself um, for who you are accepting everything about you and you shine that then it does have a knock-on effect to other people and they pick up on the energy yes um, that, that that goes through which is you know which is absolutely um, amazing um, that, that we can do it, you know, and with this, you know, if you can get this to go global, it'll be, you know, absolutely brilliant. Right. And it starts with us, you know, it's like, and sometimes we don't even have to say it. Like she was saying the telepathic communication, like sometimes we feel like we have to say everything. We don't have to say everything. I've learned, I've learned the things that I've learned from other people, mostly by them modeling it. I had a woman's, I had a woman supervisor when I lived in Canada years ago that I worked for. And I remember watching her and the way she handled certain situations and just going, wow, I've never seen a female with such grace and dignity handle a situation where maybe she's the only female and there's all these other men and they're, all these other men had their egos going. And she just was so graceful in the midst of that and just handled it. She didn't have to be a man. And that's when I learned that at that point in my life, I would, wow, she doesn't have to act like a man or be something outside of herself to find power in that situation and to lead people to a gentler, more wise decision. She just did it in such a graceful way. So I think sometimes we don't have to say things. We just have to show it. We just have to live it. We just have to be it. And we can inspire other people because I know I get inspired, inspired constantly. You know, but people in the grocery store, people I meet, people's stories that are here, I'm like, oh my gosh, the way they handled that or the love on that person or whatever, you know, it just like, whoa, whoa, it just shakes up my, my paradigm about things. And I'm like, wow, I learned that way. So you know what, even if we can just start an individual revolution one at a time, yeah. where we just try to walk out of our house in a place of groundedness and love, we can change things, exactly. you know? One that person simple. starts another person, starts another person, and the ripple effect just keeps going on and on yes. and on. Um, yes, um, John. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we are all and right? And that's the beauty of it. It's not limited to like one or two people can get this gift. No. Anybody who connects and grounds in the spiritual and seeks to step into that God force and what's out there for us and all the beauty that's out there for us, any of us can operate as angelic beings. It, any given moment. I've had so many angels in my life. It's the darkest times where you really appreciate the touch of an angel. You know, I had these moments where I, if I think about the blackest moments in my life, they're often made precious by someone who stepped up and touched me with kindness, did yeah. one little thing that on a normal day I would have missed. But because I was in such a dark space, that touch reverberated and was magical. 
And that's the beauty of the dark space is it's horrible when you're in it. And in the, when you're in it, you're like, I wish I never had to deal with this. This grief is overwhelming me or this betrayal is cutting my heart out or whatever. But when you look back at it and we've learned from it, you see these beautiful moments of just love, forgiveness, grace, right? So if we could all work on being that and receiving that, wow, then we yeah. do something. The world's a better place. Exactly. It would be a much better, a much better place. So, as you know, I do guided meditations and angel card reading. So every week I like to ask my guest, um, would they like a mini guided meditation or an angel card pulled for themselves and those watching? So, Shana, what would you like me to do? I would love an angel card. Yay! Everyone always cards. chooses Yay. angel cards. I, I love angel cards, <laughs> but then I work with angels, so oh, um, love it. I do that. So let's give the cards a quick blessing and a cleanse. Now, as always, when I do when I do angel cards, I don't do it to predict the future. I do it for what we need to know for our highest right. good at this moment in time, um, which Sheehan sounds contradictory because obviously I work with the, to heal the past. Um, and I work to um, see the future. But when I work with those, it's always to help someone come back to the present because, as we were saying earlier, you really do need to be in your presence. Right. So when I do the cards, right. it's for me to know. So what does Shana and everyone who's watching this live or at a later date need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Shana and everybody who's watching this live or at a later date need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? okay we've got two cards so let's see what we've got we have got joy and delight we have got open your heart to joy oh, wow. and we've got discovering the truth you stand in the light of truth mm, that's good so you, so you know so so pretty um pretty beautiful cards um that really correspond with everything we've been saying um to today so you you know it is kind of like with you doing what you're supposed to be doing moving forward you're you're actually standing in your light in the light of truth that can that can help others and as long as you keep your heart open um with with joy then the delight and everything you know you know i kind of like i kind of like feel you know this this movement is, is going to kind of like go really forward and and that that for you too. and for everyone who's who's um watching i think you know again it's if you can really connect with yourselves and allow the joy in your heart um to come out then the opportunities are absolutely endless that 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 are, that are going to come in and that so um yeah so I'm, I'm really good but then that's the way the angels work they always come out as to uh what what people know and quite often people already know the answers right it's a confirmation that, a lot of times yeah because yeah. if you're being aware then you know but it's always good to hear it and you know there's something really important about maintaining our joy you know life can get stressful and painful and all of those things but there is something really powerful about a childlike joy and so it's important that we tap back into that and, and awe and looking at things for the first time and looking at things the way we used to when uh, being allowing the, the power of awe to overcome us. And there's something beautiful about that. And then finding truth through the simplicity of touching the paints or whatever it is that you do to ground yourself or to connect yourself to that, that pure side of you. I think that's really important. We all have them. It's great. And we just have to remember to do it. You know, Madeline Langle, I'll say this, and Madeline Langle is one of my favorite authors, and she had um, her, I think it was her biography, she called Walking on Water, and she said, um, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, but she said, you know, we think that when we get to an age that we have to stop being the ages before, we're like, oh, I'm 47 today, so I better be a grown-up, you know, but the beauty of being 47 today is that I can still go in the yard and pick flowers like I'm four and look at the colors and touch it, right? How does it feel? How does it smell? What a beautiful color. We can still have a crush on someone like we're 12. We can still dance in the streets like we're 16, right? Yeah. We have all of that at our disposal and the wisdom of a 47-year-old woman. 
So yes, I think maintaining that awe and joy of a child is hugely important to being a really wonderful adult. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, we just get crotchety. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Who wants to be crotchety? And life, and life's too short for that. And life's too short to be crotchety. So, Shana, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? I just would say that. I would say, you know, just encouraging everyone because, you know, I have to remind myself um, is that we just need to stay connected to ourselves and to our earth and so that we can, and, the, and the, the angels and everything that's been given to us so that we can be in our purest form. If we are loving ourselves, we, it is inevitable that we are going to learn to love other people and to learn to, to advocate and take care of other people. And I think that's what we need to do right now. It's that simple because it's really hard. <laughs> it's just to truly love ourselves and then to truly go out and love other people. Let's just do what we need to do to get to that space. Everything else will follow. You know, sometimes we focus on the action instead of focusing on the intent and going back to the original intent and the original thing that needs to happen in our heart. I can go give out food to the poor, but if my heart is not pure and walking in love, then what am I doing? It's just an action. Yeah. But if I go and do that action and I'm full of love and joy and awe, then then I've done something and hopefully help light other people's love and awe and joy. And then they'll light other people's and it'll just keep going. Keep going to effect. And Keith says, what's grown up? Exactly. What is grown up? Right? It just means we have experience and knowledge. Exactly. That's what I think grown up. And I get to <laughs> so cars and yeah. kids, and she can oh, how brilliant is that? Yeah, she can still get to play. Um, play is important. Oh, that's what the painting is about. It's about playing. It's about, you know, reconnecting to that side of ourselves. So, yeah, find, go to the site, guys, if you haven't. It's wecanhearyou.com. And it will be updated in it because there's a lot of good stuff coming. But then you can kind of see what we're talking about because sometimes until you see visual, you're like, what were they doing? But when you see the visuals, you're like, oh, I see. <laughs> and if you paint yourself, send me a picture. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. See, you, 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 you preempt what I was, going, I, was, I was going to say. So, Sean, if people want to get in touch with you, connect with you, how do they do that? The Apart project, yeah, the project site is wecanhearyou.com. And we're on social now. We, it's all new, but we're setting, we just set everything up, Facebook, Instagram, and we have a website. And that will all be developing. So if you can follow us there. If you want to find me, just Shanna me. I'm on Instagram at Shanna from Louisiana. So it's Shanna from L.A., you won't forget that, right? Shanna from Louisiana. <laughs> Shanna from Louisiana. So Shanna from Louisiana. And on Instagram, it's at Shanna from LA. But I would love to connect with you guys. And, and thank you for sharing this conversation with us. I'm going to come back later and read comments and, and, and see what you guys can say. Because I can't hear you right now, but I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and if you can, and if you can post, or, um, or if you can't, then I'll, I'll, post, I'll post the links, the links in the links yes. afterwards. And so, thanks for the comments, everybody. It's yeah. so nice to see your comments popping up. Yeah, it, it's, it's brilliant, you know, and, and that's what I love about the show is the fact that the people watching can join in the conversation. Well, they are part of the conversation. They make up the energy um, of, of, the, of the show and can keep uplifted. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And thank you so much, Shana, for, um, for, for agreeing to come on my show. It's been absolutely brilliant. And that... So, oh, I think Shana's gone. Ah, oh, knows that she's back again. Hello again. Hi, somebody called in. Oh, and she's frozen again. I'm trying to, I don't Yay. know. Yay. Okay. There I'm you back. Go. You're, you're back. Here. Well, anyway, you missed me saying thank you so much, Shana, for being on the thank show. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, so, um, so everyone i'd like to thank you so much for watching um and i'd like to invite you to share this video if you um think that there and i'm pretty sure there are others out there who um, feel lost and need to get clear on their destiny like you and if you have reached that crossroads in your life and need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path then i would love to be that guide for you reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call um, where we can find out more about each other and how I can help you take charge of your destiny. And I look forward to you joining me next Monday, the 23rd of December. So, yes, I am doing a show before Christmas Eve at 8 p.m., where my guest will be Sifu Boggy, which will be his second appearance. Um, he liked it so much that he's, just, he's agreed to come back. So, um, maybe sometime next year, Shana, when 
um, if we can hear you, uh, you can come back again and. Yes, I would love that. Oh, that would be absolutely brilliant. So again, thank you everyone so much for watching and thank you for your comments and we will go back and look at them. And if you are watching the replay, we will be going back in to um, look at any comments you might have made after the show. So everyone, thank you so much. And thank I will see you, you next week. Bye. I'm do my, my queen wave. Bye, queen everybody. Wave.